All right, everybody, thank you for joining me this lovely evening. Today, I want to go over my tips and tricks for growing and getting a higher rank in RTA. So the very first thing you want to do is pick a core team. Now, your core team should be chosen based on your monster pool, your rune pool in relation to speed and both efficiency, and then your available time investment in terms of how much time you have to dedicate to RTA, since it can be time, very time consuming. For example, here, what the comp I'm currently using is centered around my core being Sierra, Hey Gang, Chung Pung, and Poseidon. So those are my, my core. My goal is to strip, CC, while also doing big DPS. So it's like a hybrid cleave slash control. And I use flex picks like Savannah, Triton, Rika, Pisama. Tessarian is surprisingly helpful, and we'll get into counters a little bit later. But yeah, so first step, pick your core team based on your monster pool. Now, your rune pool and available time investment will come in a little bit later, but number one is pick your core team. What core teams are there? So the most common compositions that you're typically gonna see are gonna be CC or crowd control, one shot to set up a 4v3, cleave, turn two, and then a, some form of bruiser comp, which can have elements of all of those kind of factored in there. So what you wanna do is you wanna look at your monster pool and determine what's gonna be the best option for you. Now, if you don't have a lot of time to get in as many wings as possible, ideally you don't wanna go with like a bruiser or something that's gonna be slow. Even crowd control, depending on what type of crowd control you're doing, that could be a little bit slow. Cleaving is getting harder as there's more anti-cleave units going around, so just keep that in mind. Number two, you wanna optimize that core team that you have chosen. So, I have a pretty large monster box. So I pretty much can do any of these styles. You may not be able to, which is fine, but focus on your best monsters. Now, once you've picked out your core team, which should be five to eight units, something in that range, maybe even a little bit less, you wanna speed tune that team. Now, you could have the slowest runes imaginable. That's okay. You're gonna play the resistance game. What the most important thing is that you are speed tuned within the comp and the team that you've designed. So for example, you wanna put one speed in between each monster based on your speed leader uh, use plus towers. So just keep that in mind. Now use the rune optimizer if you can. Use the rune optimizer is great. It can do all the calculations for speed leaders so you don't have to do the math for towers. Speed leads such as 24%, 33%, and so on. So next is speed to your team. Now, you don't wanna just get it as fast as possible. That's not the goal here. The goal here is to get everything speed to and so one unit moves, then your second unit moves, then your third unit moves, and so on and so forth. When it comes to optimizing your core team, you're gonna have monsters like Chiwu. So like Chiwu, has one of my fastest sets, right? He's not speed tuned to some of, to like my Hey Gang, just because I can't get him as fast as Chiwu, because I run Hey Gang on Despair. That's okay. If they do push back like Triton and like Chiwu, which can screw up turn orders, that's okay. You can run those units with your speediest runes. But the core of your team, you do want to keep as speed tuned as closely as possible. Number three, you wanna prioritize your artifacts for said core team. Ideally, you're gonna build artifacts before runes. You're gonna focus on additional damage from say, 
it's a Sierra, you'd want to focus on additional damage from attack and speed. Like Bison would probably benefit best from like from additional damage from HP, for example. Number three is you want to also consider damage received and dealt from opposite and neutral elements. Those are great. Those are fantastic for survivability, which is very important for RTA. Then number four, accuracy is a good priority. Anything you can't get for accuracy, you can a lot of times make up a good amount in the artifact. Now, accuracy is extremely important in RTA. In the higher levels, like C3, maybe probably G1+, everyone who's built on resistance will be on 100% resistance. So you have to build at 85% accuracy. Now, CR is the only one I don't, but that's because she's DPS, so it's a little bit different. Obviously, landing bombs is important. I need to get more accuracy on my CR because she does miss more bombs than she should. Number four, which is probably the hardest, is to do all 30 of your wings each and every day. Now, this is not something I can say that I have done or can do because I don't have the time because I have to do Guild War content and Siege and Labyrinth and all this other jazz. But if you want to push and you want to grow, the 30 wings is very important. It is the easiest way to progress because you get hands-on experience drafting, which is extremely helpful. And you learn your most common counters to your comp and then how to deal with them effectively. So do all your wings. Number five, counters. Now what you want to do is you want to build a few counters to deal with the main counters to your team. So my comp is a CC centric comp that's focused around, I don't have a huge DPS except for Poseidon, which he's my fastest, one of my fastest runs is crit rate. So he still does good damage, but I also need to get him at 85% accuracy, which I have with, with arts. So it's hard for me to deal with Junos. The Verta heal is a huge counter. So sometimes I'll pick the Verta heal. That's where my Tessarian comes in clutch. Diana is a constant pick against my comp because she automatically gets the turn when I go to strip. So, Tessarian can easily deal with Diana. Also a good counter to Bird, some Eldin F5s, Volantis, things like that that are really good against my comp. Tessarian is extremely helpful. My Bellinus is another flex pick. He's a little slow, but he works really well. I've recently built, kind of built Mephisto. I need to actually build Mephisto because with this revive meta that we're seeing here with Nana, I need options. That's why you see Rocky in my box right now. That's why you see Mephisto. Build counters to your counters. Another option is to add your counter or is to add the counters to your comp into your team. Verda Hell, for example, I can use a lot. I should really build a full DPS Verd for when I pick him against players so he doesn't affect me it's just hey gang deals really well with verd now tiana is another unit that i've built to counter the birds because verd i see a lot when i go in there and tiana doesn't touch anyone so she's great so she is a counter to my counters number six watch top players with your unique units or cops and see how they use them Drew Bagel's mentioned this multiple times. I don't think a lot of people do it, but it's extremely helpful because you can get a good idea how, of how some like high G2, G3 players climb successfully with your comp. And this also goes for LD and F5s. Now, you should really be harnessing the power of your LD and F5s. I unfortunately do not have any RTA meta LD and F5s. So it's a bit challenging for me. So I can't harness any of those. But if you do have your Neftis, your Gianna, and your things like that, Volantis, super OP, use those. Build a comp around those units. Watch top players that use those units and are successful with them. All right, honorable mentions. Make sure you come up with a core team and put your best runes on those, those monsters. Put will on everything except for your will counters. To prepare for Gianna, have maybe an Anvil or a Vertiheal, some sort of cleanser that doesn't rely on will. Tiana is a good option for Gianna. Another option for when your rune quality isn't the highest is to prioritize that team two option. And RNG, right? So if you're concerned that you don't have 
the room quality to compete at the level that you want to be at lean hard into those rng units lead hard into antares lead hard into violent runes right lean really hard into diana lean really hard into those units that will rng you into the ground you also want to build counters to popular teams like sean b uses a slow leica for leo uh for leo great option i did the exact same thing works like a charm so what you want to do is look at your box Make a decision on who your most unique monsters are, first and foremost. So if you have some LD Nat 5s that are viable and are some of the best, build a team around that. Then pick your main composition, whether it's gonna be crowd control, one shot cleave, turn two bruiser, etc. Optimize your runes, optimize your artifacts, and do your wings. The more you do, the more you learn, and you will get there. Win rate will come. And you're going to lose a lot. You're going to lose a lot. Like 60% is good. So at 60%, you're losing a lot. So just keep that in mind. I hope this helped a little bit. Use the Rune Optimizer. I'm going to put everything down in the description below. So I'll have the Rune Optimizer. I'll have the all the artifact guides, including the one I did with Childish. If you guys have any questions, need any help, whether it's getting your JSON or optimizing your team or what you should use, let me know. Put it in the comments. Shoot me an email. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this helps. You guys have a great evening, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Have a good night.